let's take another look at solving inequalities and then writing inequalities from word problems. So first, solving inequalities. Number one, just like we did with the equations, I'm gonna draw a line down my inequality symbol. I'm gonna highlight my variable so I can easily see the side that it's on. On the side with the variable, the operation that's in the equation that I see is subtraction. We use opposite or inverse operation. So the opposite of subtraction is to add. The number on the side with the variable that we were subtracting, we were doing minus 30. So we are going to add 30 to both sides. Because over here, negative 30 and positive 30 cancel each other out. We're left with just D. Bring down our inequality symbol. 32 plus 30 is 62. Number two, putting my line down my inequality symbol, highlighting my variable. On the side with the variable, the operation that I see is subtraction, so that's what's in the equation. We're using the opposite to solve, so we're going to add. The number that was with x that we're subtracting is 13, so the opposite is to add 13 to both sides. On this side here, the 13s cancel each other out. We're left with x. Bring down the inequality symbol. 25 plus 13 is 38. Number three, put our line down that inequality symbol. Highlight the variable. On the side with our variable, the operation that I see is addition. So the solving operation, the opposite of that is going to be to subtract. On the side with the variable, the, side, the number we were adding was 12, so the number we're going to subtract is 12 so that it cancels. And we do that to both sides. So on this side, they cancel out. Here, when I subtract 50 minus 12, I get 38. So I can technically leave my answer like this, but to get in the... Or, uh, the practicing for graphing, I can also flip this around, move the x to the left, move my number to the right. Since I flip-flopped those, I'm going to flip-flop my sign. And now both times, the point is pointed at the 38. Number four, bring my line down the inequality symbol, highlighting my variable. The operation that is on the side of the variable is addition. The opposite of adding is to subtract. So the number that's with our variable y is 41, so the opposite is to subtract 41 from both sides. On this side, it cancels. We're left with just y there. Bring my inequality symbol down. 60 minus 41 is 19. Again, I can leave my answer just like this, or I can flip-flop. Move my y and 19 to the opposite sides. Since I flip-flopped those, I need to flip-flop the sign. And either way, that point on the inequality symbol is pointed at the y. Okay, number five, same thing, putting our line down the inequality symbol, highlighting our variable. Sometimes people get mixed up on what operation is happening here. We should automatically be able to say it's not addition or subtraction because I don't see an addition sign, I don't see a subtraction sign. So it's either multiplication or division. And then remembering, if it's multiplication, that's when a number is right next to a variable. So this is showing multiplication. So the opposite to solve is going to be to divide. Remember that we want to get kind of away from using the division symbol, so I'm going to use a fraction bar to show that I'm dividing. The number that's on the side with the variable is 4. x is being multiplied by 4, so the opposite is to divide both sides by 4. On this side, our 4s cancel each other out, so we're left with just x. Bring down our inequality symbol. 72 divided by 4 is 18. Just like the other ones, I can leave my answer like this, 
or I can flip it around. Flip my X to the left, my 18 to the right, and flip my sign. And to double check, my point is still at the 18. Number six, draw my line down my inequality symbol. Highlight my variable. I don't see a plus sign, I don't see a minus sign. I know it's either multiplication or division. My number is right next to my variable. That means multiplication. So the opposite to solve is going to be to divide. Again, get rid of that division sign. We're just going to use a fraction bar. The number on the side with the variable, x is being multiplied by five. The opposite is to divide both sides by five. On this side, our fives cancel each other out, so we're left with just x. On this side, we're doing 95 divided by 5, which is 19, and I'm bringing down my inequality symbol. I can leave my answer like this, or I can flip it, move my x to the left, 19 to the right, and flip my sign. Last two that are just solving. So looking at number seven, put my line down my inequality symbol, highlight my variable. I don't see a plus sign. I don't see a minus sign. I know it's either multiplication or division. Since we have this fraction bar, a reminder that fraction bars mean division, right? That's how we showed division up here. So that means division is in the equation, which means the opposite, our solving operation is going to be multiplication. On the side with the variable, the number that's being divided is th that we're dividing by is three. So we want to multiply by three. So I'm going to show my multiplication with the parentheses. Try not to use x because that's going to look like a variable. You could use a dot, but that sometimes looks like a decimal. So I am just multiplying both sides by three. On this side with the variable, our threes cancel. We're left with just x. Bring down my inequality symbol. Twelve times three is thirty-six. And last one that is just solving, draw our line down our inequality symbol, highlight our variable. There's no plus, there's no minus. I see this fraction bar, that means division is in the problem, so we solve with multiplication. X is being divided by 8, so we are going to multiply each side by 8. On this side, our 8's cancel, we're left with X. Bring down the inequality symbol, seven times eight is 56. So that was a review of just solving. Now let's look at writing inequalities. So we aren't gonna practice solving these, we are just going to um, practice writing them. So Adam is renting a DJ for $18 per hour and wants to spend at most $270. So first off, I'm circling my numbers, okay? Then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna highlight keywords. So I'm gonna look by both numbers. Adam is renting a DJ for $18 per hour. That per tells me the operation is multiplication. Now by our other number and wants to spend at most. I see at most, if I look over here, at most tells me that it's going to be less than or equal to. And then last part, our unknown. Well, it's $18 per what? Per hour. So H equals the number of hours. Now we're gonna write our inequality. The total amount where our inequality goes next to is 270. So that's my total. We already identified the inequality symbol is gonna be less than or equal to. And it's $18 per hour, so it's 18 times H, which we just write as 18H. Let's try another one. A bus has enough seats for up to 21 people. Right now, there are 12 people on the bus. How many more people can fit on the bus? So I circle my numbers. I'm gonna look at by those numbers to see the keywords. So by this one, a bus has enough seats for up to, and if I look over here, I see up to, 
right here, which tells me the symbol is less than or equal to. The next one, right now, there are 12 people on the bus, okay? I don't see a keyword yet, so I'm gonna keep reading. How many more people can fit on the bus? <clears throat> so how many more tells me addition. And last part is our unknown. So what are we talking about here? Right now there are 12 people. Plus the question says, how many more people? So I'm gonna use P equals number of people. Now let's write our inequality. The total amount that the bus can fit is 21. So I know that's what my inequality is gonna be equal to. We already identified that the symbol is less than or equal to. And our operation is addition, so I'm gonna take my variable of p plus our other number of 12. Sandra needs to beat at least 50 levels of Candy Crush to catch up to Jackie. If she already beat 33 levels, how many more does she have to beat? So looking at by our first word, Sandra needs to beat at least 50. So looking over here, at least, I see right here, which tells me the symbol is greater than or equal to. Let's look by the next one. Um, to catch up to Jackie, if she um, already beat 33 levels, how many more does she have to beat? So I see the keyword more, which tells me addition. And then last, what are we talking about? So she already beat 33 levels. How many more does she have to beat? So I'm gonna say L equals number of levels. All right, the total amount that Sandra needs to beat is 50. So that's what I'm setting my inequality equal to. We already identified she wants it to be greater than or equal to that. And our operations addition, so I'm taking my variable of L plus the 33 she already beat needs to be greater than or equal to 50. And last one. Selena is selling bracelet, bracelets for $4 each. She wants to make at least $40. So let's look by each term, each number. Selena is selling bracelets for $4 each. Remember back to our equations unit, each means multiplication. She wants to make at least $40. At least I see over here is greater than or equal to. And then what are we talking about? Well, she's selling bracelets for $4 each. So we're talking about bracelets. So I'm gonna say B equals number of bracelets. So the total amount that we have is 40. Our inequality symbol we identified is greater than or equal to, and it's four times the number of bracelets, so I'm just going to write that as 4B.